Hey folks, Jeff Brown here, Merchandising Director, Best Cigar Prices. And uh, I'm here today to talk to you about another installment of, of True Cigar Stories with Jeff Brown. And I think today we're gonna talk about, uh, we're gonna talk about China. What does China have to do with cigars, you may ask yourself. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we're known for our premium cigars. But we also do accessories. We do lighters, cutters, ashtrays, things of that nature. And I had heard that there was a big show over in China where they sold the accessories. So I decided through a partner of ours that we were going to go to China and we were going to take a look and try to find cutters and lighters and things of that nature over in China. So we went to Guangzhou, of all places. They have a, a really big show over there, and I went over with a fellow by the name of Teddy. Teddy, I miss you. Teddy's since retired, but uh, he was uh, a Chinese gentleman, and he spoke the language, and uh, I really needed him in China because I went over there with maybe four uh, vocabulary words. Ni ha, ni ha ma, taguela. That's all I got. You know, that's, that's the extent of, of my, my uh, Chinese. So we go over, it's a 18 hour straight flight from uh, New York to Hong Kong, then another two hours, which I could have done on my head after being 18 hours in a plane all cramped up. We get over to, uh, to China and uh, you know, again, I'm over there with Teddy, we land, 12 hour difference. Still got jet lag from it. Um, it's tw exactly 12 hours, so it's noon in the United States. It's midnight in China. So we get over there, and, and obviously we're a little bit hungry. So the first thing we do is uh, we end up going to a restaurant, and I got to tell you, it was uh, it was shocking to say the least because I go into a restaurant, all I see are basically aquariums with live things in them. There's snakes and eels and things of that nature, and basically you point at it, and then somebody grabs it, and then they go cook it, and they bring it over to your table, and you know, I even saw, I mean, a, a full-grown gator in there with just a rope around its neck. Kind of scared me at first. I walked around the corner, boom, gator. Like, oh, look at that. But I guess, you know, people will, will eat it over there and, you know, it is what it is. So um, we're over there. We go to the show, millions and millions of square feet. Um, translators, you name the language, or somebody there that can take you through the show. So we're walking around and we're looking for, you know, accessories. And after walking for a day or two, I said, you know, to my guy, there's got to be an easier way. You know, can we type in a computer and they could tell us what floor to go to in this place? I mean, literally millions and millions of square feet. I saw just, just for example, uh, Christmas trees. I mean, levels and levels and levels of Christmas trees. And I ran into buyers from all over the world. You know, I saw people from Walmart and Target and they're there buying containers of this, that, and the other thing. And I'm just looking for lighters and cutters and you know, ashtrays and stuff that's, you know, cool and unique. So I'm typing things into the computer and basically it's just, it's a scavenger hunt. You just got to walk around until you, you find this stuff. So we walked around, we found some stuff, uh, made some deals. We actually even went to a couple factories that actually make uh, humidors, which was interesting. Um, so anyway, you know, talking about just, just bizarre things over there. Um, I'm standing out one night, it's like one o'clock in the morning. And it's still hustling and bustling, people moving around, things going on 24-7 over there. And so my translator and I decided to go outside and have a cigar. We're standing out in front of our hotel, and uh, there's, there's an older gentleman. He's coming down the street, and uh, or down the sidewalk, and he's got an old wheelbarrow. And it's made out of wood, and it's all rickety, and the wheel turned. You know, it's not exactly a round wheel, and it's got a little clunk as it's going. He's coming down, and he sees me, and... He looks and he's like, American. I'm like, hey, how you doing? And um, he proceeds to uh, pull out a, a tiger pelt out of this thing. And I'm looking and I'm like, that really looks like a real tiger pelt. Now I'm here to purchase, you know, wares for, for the cigar industry. I'm really not into, uh, you know, buying a tiger pelt. So my translator starts yelling at the guy and they're going back and forth and they're talking and yelling. And so the guy, you know, takes his cart, puts his pelt back in and, you know, proceeds to go down the street. So I talked to my translator. I'm like, what, what just happened here? He goes, he wanted to sell you a, a, a real tiger pelt for like 25 bucks. And I'm thinking, 
you know what, that's that's a really low price for, for a tiger pelt. And he's like, yeah, it's illegal. And, you know, and obviously, I mean, I, you know, had I, you know, there's no interest whatsoever, but, you know, could you imagine trying to bring that back through customs and trying to explain that to the people? Like, well, this was a pelt that some guy tried to sell me on the street for, you know, I bought it on the street for like 25 bucks. I probably would still be doing time in, in the jail for that. So I guess the point to this whole thing is, is to tell you folks and explain to you folks the great lengths that we will go to to bring you the very best deals in the world. Whether it's one o'clock in the morning on the streets of Guangzhou, China, whether it's three o'clock in the afternoon in some factory in the middle of Honduras, Nicaragua, or the Dominican Republic, we're out there looking for the very best deals for all you fine ladies and gentlemen. And by the way, no tigers or other animals were harmed during the filming of this.